I think we're recording. Um, what I want to do is say a massive thank you to Sarah for this because for me, it is a massive taboo topic that no one really wants to talk about, but it is being portrayed on social media and kids are learning about this through one way or another. So for me, it's important people get the facts and actually um, what it's all about rather than a misconception of what they think it's about, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay, um, this feels a bit like one of those meetings where you stand up and say things. So my name is Sarah. I'm 62 years old and from the age of eight, possibly earlier, but that's when I remember it, I've had what's known as BFRB, which is Body Focused Repetitive Behaviours. Um, and actually, this is something that, that it, it can sound quite minor, quite trivial, and I think a lot of people experience it. And in actual fact, I've, I've been doing a lot more research on this. And overall, body focused repetitive behaviours affect about 5% of the population. So that's five in every 100 people are affected. And trichotillomania or hair pulling which is um was my main thing it's about two percent of the population so a lot of people are affected by this and it is a form of intentional self-harm it's a form of relief release of stress management and it in it, it for me in the past um i've been asked as an adult if i'm if i'm having chemotherapy because my hair's so thin and there are bald patches and stuff and i i didn't have the huge great bald patches that a lot of people have i was quite selective about where so that i and that in itself is it sounds really weird but i was quite selective about which bits i would pull so that um it wouldn't be as noticeable but it was it really was noticeable um and it as I say, it started when I was, or I was, I'm really aware of it when I was about eight. Um, it started, I started pulling my hair out, literally. And I had other anxiety symptoms as well. Um, but that was, it was kind of the main one. And the problem is because it's hidden and a lot of girls play with the hair. And you, I think a lot of parents, it's just like, oh, you know, playing with the hair again. And people do comment on it, stop doing that. It's really irritating. And of course, it's, it becomes an urge. And it's, it's hard to describe if you haven't had it. But it's, it's a bit like anyone who's ever done any relaxation or meditation and you get a little tickle on your face and, and you kind of, the more you try not to think about it, the bigger it gets and you, you kind of have to scratch an itch. And it's a bit like that. It's, it's an urge or an itch that you have to deal with. And you do. And, but you can get, it, it sounds really strange. It, it becomes quite selective. You, you almost look for the right hair. You want the one that's got the right texture that you get satisfaction for. You want the root to come out as well. And this all sounds really peculiar, but this is part of it. It, it isn't just pull my hair out. It's, it's quite selective. It's quite specific. Uh, and over half of people with trick or trichotillomania do put the hair in their mouth, either to bite the end off, bite the root off, or just to suck it and throw it away but a significant number of people actually um, eat the hair and you end up with a trichobezoar. Uh, anyone who's read Harry Potter will know the bezoar is the stone from the stomach of a goat. Well, it, it's basically, it's a ball of hair that ends up in the stomach, um, which can cause serious problems if it gets bigger. So again, that's something to be aware of. Um, but these body focused repetitive behaviors, it includes nail biting. And again, we look at nail biting as just being a phase, something that people go through, but also skin picking, which is something to this day I do uh, more when I'm stressed, usually this thumb, but also fingers. If I get a little skin tag, I'll pull it off to the point where it bleeds and it's painful and it's, it is painful. And my thumb for the last few weeks has been really bad. It's unfortunately got better, so I can't really show you, but um, every movement was painful and there was just that little sense of relief and it's really hard to explain but it's it's just that temporary whew, something else to think about and i suppose people always joke you know if you've got a bad headache drop something on your foot and you forget about the head and it is it's just that moment of distraction um that comes in and although i don't pull my hair out anymore and it's probably only been the last eight to ten years that that stopped I do do this. So I'll pick at one side so it's shorter than the others. And that's not bad at the moment. Quite often it'll be up here, um, which is something hairdressers notice and comment on. Hairdressers are the people that know about this. They're the people 
who really spot it. So it, it's, it's almost, it's a stress relief. And I think in youngsters, it's a way of kind of releasing their emotions because they don't know any other way. Um, and it's a way of, yeah, literally releasing emotions, but it's like anything else. It, it becomes a habit. It becomes an addiction. It becomes something that you have to do. Um, people get very secretive about it. If people notice with the head, you find other areas of your body. Um, pubic hair is a very common one, um, but things like eyebrows, eyelashes. Um, and once it's, once it's taken hold, once it's there, it can become quite noticeable. You have bald patches, you have thin areas, eyebrows can be quite limp. And it, that's, people sort of comment on that. People notice it. And more than that, you are so aware of it that you think, I used to have, oh, different ways of doing my hair so that I could hide the patches and things because you're so conscious of people spotting it and saying something and, and saying, oh my goodness, what have you done there? And, you know, I remember bending down once in front of my husband and he was like, oh my God, your hair's virtually all gone. Um, and it was... Yeah, I, you, you hope that people don't notice, even though you know that they do. Um, and it, it just becomes almost this, this fear. You, you pick places in a room. You, when you're, if you're sitting in a, in a group or a crowd, you'll always pick the high up places because you don't want people looking down on, on, the, on your head and seeing bald patches. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it becomes, the knock-on effect becomes even more self-conscious. And if you think... For youngsters, I was eight, it starts off as something that is to relieve anxiety and stress, but it then creates different anxiety and stress because of the body consciousness. Now, I, I was eight years old, you know, half a century ago. We had our own issues and things like that, but body image wasn't really one of them in those days. You just got on with it. Um, it's hugely different these days. And for kids to have something that makes them stand out like that is something that would so easily, I was teased, but I wouldn't say I was bullied, but looking back, who knows? Um, but I think these days it's something that would be picked on and comments made and all sorts. And if you, you know, I know Tori, you, you've done an awful lot into some of the messages that are sent. And when it's something this personal about your appearance, it's another hook that other people can tap into and, and kind of destroy your confidence and it's it's destroyed mine it's it's held me back from things because i'm so conscious of it phases where i stopped and, I, and there have been times where i haven't done it but the problem with that is as you can imagine you end up with all the new hair growth coming through and being all tufty and it and it's 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 obvious there so again you you get really really good at um at hiding it and you develop other patterns and you, 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 you develop other things. So the skin picking comes in because the hair's got so bad. And it, as I say, it, it's, it's such a, it's such a common problem. 2% pull their hair out. 5% have something else. Um, that it, it isn't talked about. It isn't discussed. It is something that a lot of people, it's almost like the worst case scenarios get talked about, but the, the less severe cases, are just kind of ignored and I, I remember once I I can't remember what had happened I had you know like you get a little split in the lip or something or a spot and I'd picked at it because picking skin picking is another one people would just pick and have big sores I picked at it and I picked and of course it got worse and worse and worse and I had a patch like this of basically scab almost open scabs and you know you convince yourself that you've put enough concealer on and powder all you end up with is crusty scab, which looks even worse. I mean, I'm talking now, I was probably in my late twenties and, and it's so obvious, but every time you speak, it splits and it hurts. And of course it sets it off again. So you've got even more. And, and it's, it's hard to explain because probably most of us, you know, a lot of us, if you get a little scab, it, the temptation is to pick it. There's things like that, but this is more, and it, it's so related to anxiety it's so related to stress it's like an immediate reaction and even now if i think about certain people i'm around certain people i'm not going to say who my instinct is immediately it's the one time i find myself going straight in for the kill not not the ends it's straight in for the kill and it's but it's and it's you get almost selective you look for the bit that feels right and, and i 
I can't explain that in any other way. It's just that you're, you're seeking that one bit that you know is going to be the oh, satisfaction. It's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Um, it's definitely linked to anxiety and stress. Um, but they also uh, think it, it could be to do with hormones. Everything seems to be blamed on hormones. Um, it could be sort of coping and it's a definitely a relief mechanism. The more you do it, the better it feels. And it, it becomes unconscious after a while. You don't even know you're doing it. Um, and they do, they, they do think there might be a genetic link as well. Um, but I suspect it's more if you observe somebody repeatedly doing a behaviour as a child, you don't think, oh, that's interesting. You just see it. And I know, um, I know, I know someone who, well, my son, who does the same with his thumbs. Um, and chances are he, as a child, picked up when I was stressed and I was doing it. Um, so, yeah, it's really, and it was, it was funny the other day that I was in a group and I've got a tiny little cut. It, genuinely, it's a little cut from gardening, but it, it, it sort of crusted over and I picked at it. And of course, the next thing I know, I've got blood dripping down my arm in a group, which was great. And it's, it's, <sighs> It's so hard. This is the first time I've ever talked about it. And I'm, my stomach is at the moment really going. And I'm, I really, I'm aware that I'm desperately trying to stop myself doing it um, because it's there. But it, it is, it's like having the worst itch and not being able to scratch it. Um, and you know that the minute you go for it, it's, it, it is going to feel better. And, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not cutting. It's not some of the other things that people do. Um, and actually, a lot of people that have these body-focused repetitive behaviours don't necessarily go on to cut. But one of the issues is nowadays is that because anxiety and stress is so much more common at a younger age, that people are almost moving on to sort of more extreme methods, um, which is is worrying. It's, yeah, it, it sounds trivial, it sounds minor, but... Over 50 years of my life have been affected. I have never had a manicure purely because I'm so embarrassed that there's always evidence of it on my hands that I don't want to go. Um, and and it, it's little things like that. You know, you, you just, you, I'm, I'm at it now. Um, I'm at it now. It's, it's something as well in my day, there wasn't, 50 years ago, there wasn't quite the awareness of children's mental health as there is now. I was written off as an odd little thing, a funny little thing, um, or, you know, a nervy little thing. And of course, you end up with that. It, it just becomes who you are after a while. You, you are the, the odd little thing, the funny, the nervy little thing. And people, you, that's how you almost become. And so when you're around other people, that's who, oh, I'm the funny, nervy little thing. Um, and I, I just, I, I it, it it stops you doing so many things. It stops you doing so many things. You know, you're grateful for attention. I probably went out with boys that I wouldn't have looked at twice under different circumstances, but it's like, oh, they've overlooked the hair or things like that. And you, you do things. So it, it's something you do worry about. And as I say, you know, you think about where you're sitting. Can people see it? Can people notice it? And um, it, it, it's something that, that's quite, I, I say, written off as trivial or silly, but actually... It can blight your life. It really can. It's it's not something to be dismissed, and it's I think something that um, I think a lot of people do it in secret. But there's a big part as well, and I think this is true of a lot of issues with kids. You kind of want someone to notice, but you don't want them to point it out. If that makes any sense, you want someone to to notice that there's something wrong, but you don't want them to pick on the the picking or the pulling. You want them to, to be aware that you're, you're kind of, it's inside that's the problem. Um, but, but it isn't. People say, oh, you know, it's a bad habit. Stop doing it. It's really irritating. And, of course, that just makes you feel worse. And I think, especially at eight, I didn't know what anxiety was. I didn't know what stress was. If someone said, are you anxious? It'd be like, what's anxious? Can't even spell it. Never mind, describe it. So, but it's usually a sign that there's something going on. And, and I've actually been lucky enough to work with someone and, and kind of tra almost track back to it. But it's hard to break the habit, even though I understand the reason I'm working on breaking the habit. 
and I think lockdown's made it much worse for me because I'm on my own and that that gets quite lonely um so I think there may well be parents out there that recognize these patterns in themselves and in men it could be growing a beard so you can pull bits of it out um it can be quite subtle I know I was speaking to someone the other day who said oh my god I've just realized my husband after talking to you I realized my husband pulls his eyebrows out just a little bit um and, and she sort of said oh, you know she sort of said are you aware you do that he said oh no and he said oh they're close enough to he said let me know when I'm doing it because then I can figure out what I'm feeling and it's again that's a big part of it is is that you don't want someone to say oh god stop pulling your hair out you want someone to sort of almost say what's going through your mind right now rather than pick on the habit um and it's that that for me is a big part of it and it's breaking the habit and I've been looking into sort of what people can do you know and there's things like medications to reduce anxiety but especially with kids nobody wants that even therapy might be a bit too much for kids those fidget spinners that were the craze a while ago again could be a way of relieving anxiety without doing it um exercise is a good one sort of go out and do something because then you come back feeling positive um and again exercise is really good for all the chemicals in your brain the neurotransmitters and the hormones and they again there may be a link with some of the chemicals in the brain just sort of not quite functioning right which is where the urge becomes too much to resist um but even even um like a stress ball or a, a, i'm just trying to look for I've, used, oh, well, I've got bracelets on but just something that you can ping instead to almost break the habit break the cycle but for me i think the biggest thing now and i think we're much more aware of children's mental health now is, is kind of not making a big deal of it but having a way of initiating a conversation you know tell me what you're feeling at the moment how are you feeling and I know a lot of parents don't have time for it because they're so busy. And, and I get that. Having I've had three kids of my own. I know how, how busy you are. But equally, I think it's I'm evidence that more than 50 years later, it's still part of my life. It still affects me. Um, and, you know, maybe going for manicure isn't a big deal. But actually, I would like to have nice nails. I don't necessarily want long you know, Pat, I just want nice ones, but I'm, I don't want to go to someone and have them say, what on earth do you do to your nails? And then have to explain. Uh, maybe I will now. But it's, as I say, it's, yeah, it's really, I'll, I'll, I'll probably coming out all muddled up now, but as I say, it's the first time I've really talked about it. And so it's, woof. Um, I think I was, it was always the don't do it, stop doing it. Why can't you stop? Why can't you, you know, it's really irritating. Stop playing with your hair. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. Um, and, and people would be like, oh, you're doing it again. You're pulling your hair out again. And it's like, I know I am. You know, duh. Um, it's much more about a much more soft approach, a much a gentle approach. And I think depending on the age of your children, when you can kind of see, you get a feel for when it's about to happen, is, is sort of, let's go for a walk or let's sit down and read this story for younger ones. Let's do something. Let's distract. Older ones, I just found recently, there's, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're these just between us journals um, where you, you can, the child can write in it or the teenager can write in it and then mum reads it and can write a response. So there's communication without actually talking. But I think for a lot, it's, it's yeah, kids play with their hair kids pick at things kids kids fidget they do but once you start to recognize them doing it you start to see when it's become bigger than just the odd play you know kids play their split ends stuff like that but occasionally they do. but once you start to notice it more and more and more or you notice little bald patches or their skin seems to be tattered and torn it's it's important to sort of be aware and just do something together to distract and talk uh, for me, walking and talking has been huge for me because I've done quite a bit of um, working either with my own clients but also for myself. Because when you're walking, you're not looking directly at someone. You're out in nature and it somehow has a very calming thing. And with kids, certainly, they often talk about things that they wouldn't normally because it seems safer. They're not being sat down and stared at. Um, and so that can help. It's distract. Um if there's an issue, 
and you want to know how much of an issue it is. If it's things like picking your skin on your thumbs, I don't know if you can quite see, but it's, it's, got, it's gone now. Put a plaster on. Pop a plaster on and just see how often you go to pick. Because you won't be able to and it'll be, you'll realise because it's become so unconscious. Wear gloves. Um, stick plasters all over your fingers or some, some sort of glove that you can't because you'll notice when you're doing it. And I think one of the first steps is for people is it's probably become such a habit that you, you genuinely don't know you're doing it anymore. So that something like that, that sort of pattern interrupt, you just think, oh, why am I going for my hair again? And you can't do it. Um, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say because obviously it's so individual and, but it's, it's recognizing when you're doing it, recognizing when your child's doing it, because for a child, it might be a sign of something bigger going on underneath. That's something they're really anxious about. And any parents who've got kids who are about to go back to school, notice things like this, because these are often the little signs that you don't notice that maybe indicate that they're really nervous. And I know for a lot of kids going back to school right now, they may, may well have been out of quite toxic situations and the thought of going back is quite scary. Um, so there may well be little things going on um, that, that they just... I guess it's such a big thing for them as well, isn't it? It's like yeah. a big part of their life and they've not had it for six, seven weeks. Yeah. Now all of a sudden they're going back and they've not really had the pe the kids that are going back. They've not really had a lot of time to get their heads around what's going on and process it before they're back into school. Like nothing's happened. Yeah. And, and I think that I think you know for parents, it's it's not picking up every time they touch the hair or anything like that. It's it's stepping back and just looking to see if it's habitual, looking to see if if there are patches that are, are sort of a bit dodgy, looking to see fingers and thumbs if there's something going on. Um, it might sound a bit gross, but if they spend a lot of time in the bathroom or when they're in bed, look for hair. Look, notice if your hoover seems to be picking up more than usual. Um, and again, don't go in heavy handed. What on earth is this about then? Um, you're going to be bald and you'll look really awful. But it's, it's kind of taking opportunities to maybe go, go for a walk for 10 minutes or do something together um, and, and just talk you know it's, it's how, how are you feeling might be quite a good one it's funny you say that because i was told um about driving as well the be one of the best times to talk oh, to your kids is when you're driving because again it's the no eye contact thing you're sort of focused on where you're going and what you're doing and the kids are nice and relaxed and they're not sort of focusing or under that pressure that oh there's going to be a talk here do you know what i mean and i think that can sometimes uh make people nervy um it, i know you said before we started speaking about um i hope you don't mind me bringing it up but your mum used to trivialize stuff um, oh yeah did your mum know from eight years old or did you tell her or how did that conversation she, come out she knew because she said oh when i was changing your bed it's full of hair it's ridiculous you'll go bald right. um, and that was kind of oof, yeah um and yeah it just you, the problem is when people notice it you try and be more subtle so you try and do it so that people don't notice and and you sort of you know quick little you you do it as if if you're just scratching your head but you're not you're looking for the right hair and and this is going to sound really bizarre um, but i just want people to recognize how much of an issue it can be if if you found the right hair and you're interrupted and you lose it it's it, that's quite distressing because you've just found the perfect relief I, that sounds probably really weird but it's kind of like that's almost stressful in itself is because you're sort of I've lost it now and, and you'll kind of go back to the area and think, where was it um and and it's oh yeah it's really bizarre it's, it, it's a really bizarre sensation it's hard to explain but it becomes such an unconscious urge that to not do it is is just if you could go back 50 years or when you started doing it and your mum found your hair in the bed what would you want or what would you have liked her response to be to you sort of not bring it up and talk to her about it another time or how if, if parents are watching this and they're suspecting their kids what would be a good way to approach it and should they approach it straight at the time or is there things to say I think say? I, I think it it depends on your relationship with your children but I think it, it's got to be quite a subtle approach it's got to be not too direct, not too 
I can see you're pulling your hair out, but you know, I've noticed there's quite a lot of hair in your bed and sometimes we lose more hair at certain times of year. Have you noticed that? And, and see where the conversation goes because you, we do tend to shed hair at different seasons. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it's kind of m not making it a big deal, but just sort of saying, Oh, you know, it's quite a lot of hair coming out. Um, you know, it, 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 are you, how does it, does it come out when you just do that? Or is it something that you, I don't know. It's, it's kind a of just drop it into conversation as opposed to just going straight in saying, you know, yeah. is, this, is this what you're doing? Yeah, or, or you're playing with your hair all the time. Or, yeah, it might be, you know, just how, how, how are you feeling about going back to school? Or, you know, is, is there anything you want to talk, you know, is there anything we'd like to talk about? But make it a really friendly environment, not a sit down and stare them in the eyes. Um, it's a really hard one because for me, it's, it's so easy to sort of say, you know, you must get out of this habit. You must stop doing that. You'll go bald. It's, it's just sort of maybe even just a, just notice you're playing with your hair a bit more than usual. Um, but, you know, is there any reason? Um, so it's, it's, it's an individual one, but the worst things are just sort of to boldly go and talk about it. It's, it's subtle. It might be just, I've just noticed your, your thumbs a bit sore. Um, what's that from? So it, it's more almost prompting. find a neutral place and just a neutral time yeah. and then yeah. just sort of a it's general conversation. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it, but it's it's. I mean, I use a lot of sort of prompting type questions in my work, and um, I'm at it now. Uh, it's more sort of you know, I've I've noticed you, I've noticed you've been playing with your hair a bit more. Is this something you'd like to talk about? Or I've noticed you're picking at your skin. You know, is is it something you want to talk about or or not? And you're giving them the option to say yes or no, and and you know from the reaction if it's a problem or if it's just nothing. Yeah. You'll know. You just get a sixth sense. And it's um, kids always have the tells, don't they? They always have the little thing. You know, yeah. you'll know that as well. You 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 know their body language. You know when they're fibbing. <laughs> Never tell them you know how they're fibbing. But it's you just know. And, and I think it's if they sort of say, oh no, no I don't, and they clearly it upsets them, it's something you can come back to. It's something not to go, no, there's obviously something bothering you, let's talk more. It's about sort of saying, okay, that's fine, you know. And then maybe a bit later on, say, you know, if there is something bothering you, we can talk. We could go for a walk and we can go for a coffee or we could go shopping. Well, soon, go shopping, so, um, coffee and shopping. But it's, it's, opening the, the channel of communication because it may be something that they're ashamed about uh they're embarrassed about or they don't understand themselves so they're not ready to talk and i think that's one of the big things it's not harping on about it but it's it's coming back to it gently yeah definitely time, you know, every now and then um and, and it's it's a hard one, but I think it's it's that sort of prompting. You know, I've noticed that you, you've you've got a little bit of um, you know, I mean, it, your thumbs a bit rough or your fingers are a bit sore. Um, is 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 there anything you want to talk about, or is there anything you know? What can we do? It, it's difficult because you don't want to force the conversation, but you want to kind of in their open own time in a way that they can talk to you. Um, and do you know what? There might be parents listening to this. That, God, I do that. Um, Maybe they're picking it up from me because I, I suspect if, if we're talking about 5% of the population have, have a problem with these behaviours, 2% with hair pulling, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And it's, it's something that uh, some parents might recognise listening to this. But it's, Definitely. And it's, it's not the self-harm in the way we talk about the sort of cutting and burning and, and embedding and things like that. It's, it's very subtle. It's, but it's, Although it's a very minor physical harm, it's quite a big psychological one because of the consequences of it. You are embarrassed about your hands. And I, I know people in business, you know, will be really kind of, they don't want to shake hands with people because they've got bitten nails or they've got bad cuticles or they've got scabby bits. Um, that's, that's a typical, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see it on my camera very well. But yeah, no, the camera's there. Oh, I'll, yes, yeah. Yeah. And that's literally where I found, and I'll, 
but I'm you know I, I don't like showing my hands because of it so it can hold people back as they get older um, and as I say my my childhood we didn't have social media we didn't have the internet um, we didn't have a lot of the issues yeah there was bullying went on there was teasing and stuff like that but you it was face to face um, and I think for a lot of parents if their kids have got some of these people might be very aware of it um, other children and sort of using it against them um, and I, I I didn't really I didn't really experience that but where I'd picked sometimes people would comment they would make sort of nasty comments like oh I wonder if taking your makeup leaving your makeup on overnight gives you bad skin oh yeah look at Sarah it does just remember that came back to me um, and actually it was where I'd I'd had a spot and just made it much worse by picking at it so it was nothing to do with makeup I didn't really wear makeup but again it, it's something that kids will pick up on yeah and these days because they're so keen almost to find to find a weakness it's an issue so it's like I say yeah it, it's minor the physical harm for a lot of these sorts of things isn't significant unless you swallow a hairball and that can be a major impact but it has a psychological effect that that is troubling you said something quite interesting about your trigger being people sometimes oh yeah how easy is it to recognize your triggers could you is it i always advocate keeping a diary you know like when you start to get anxious or you're feeling stressed just write it down how you're feeling you mentioned about how you're feeling at the time if there's yeah. nowhere to talk to is that quite a good idea to get a book and then just write down to try yeah. and figure out what your triggers are because it's obviously massive you can't do anything about it until you know what triggers you that that well this is the problem is particularly if it started young it's almost become a habit and like a lot of habits you don't think about habits yeah you just do them so you don't recognize what's triggering you so for me it was it's only been in the last few years i've thought oh hang on a minute i'm reaching for my hair what's happening um or the urge is there what's happening or i'm at my thumb what's happening and it is recognizing that trigger and saying okay so the next time I see that person or have that experience or whatever, what else can I do? And it might be as simple as um, a plaster on the area that I pick, or it might be that I have my hair tied back or something like that. Um, so it's, it's kind of okay. And then because once, when you've had that pattern interrupt, when you've had that, you've got a conscious, oh, I can't. Yeah. it stops you and you kind of think okay that's interesting it is this so okay and it's it's about putting something in place beforehand right i'm going to see that person i know that that causes me some sort of stress and distress um so before i do it i'm going to do for me it's the i don't know if you've seen the amy cuddy body language ted talk if you haven't mm. brilliant. i do the alpha pose or the wonder woman pose and it gives me <laughs> just a a bit of confidence to do it's, it's a wonderful one to watch if you haven't um but it's it's okay so what am i going to do and in one particular case it's i i now think okay if anything is said i just say that was unkind and or that was an unkind thing to say and i leave i leave that bit of the conversation so instead of becoming distressed and immediately I, I, I don't challenge it, I don't confront it, I just say, oh, that was an unkind thing to say, and then I move on straight away. Um, so you've, making that, you've made that conscious decision in your mind, I am in control of the situation, and like you say, it is about finding ways to break that habit, isn't it? Because yeah. it, it, it takes 14 weeks to form a habit, so you've been doing it 50 years, it's definitely you know, an ingrained habit. So I think my advice always is to parents, whether it's right or wrong, is try and find what triggers, and then find something to break that habit. And I'm going to blow your trumpet a bit because you are a massive fitness exercise guru. You've got how many books written? Oh, no, six. Six books published. Well, five, five to do with the fitness side of things, fitness, fitness instructors, and one actually, um, one's about stress. <laughs> but, yeah. but they are published books. So, you know, you oh, yeah. know your stuff. So, and I am a massive advocate for exercise things. And I think sometimes even just going out for a run or going you know distracting or run up the stairs or you know just do something because it is all about distracting the mind and finding an interruption for it yeah and it is that pattern interrupt if you notice it in kids 
kind of interrupt the pattern maybe without drawing attention to it and then it's a soft approach don't just go straight in and say let's talk about you pulling your hair out it's just i've noticed you play with your hair a bit more um is there any reason for that and if they say no then just leave it but kind of find different ways to come in because at some point they might well just start to say well actually i, I just find that I, I do it when i'm stressed um or or you could say i've noticed that you know when you like on a sunday night when you've got school the next day you do pick your skin a bit more or you do this or you do that or you whatever you know is, is there anything that worries you about going back to school tomorrow um so it's that soft approach but it's it's not don't do that it's a bad habit it don't pick up on the negative stuff you know go in with the talk to me but but in a subtle way you know and and i think like you say driving or walking is a big thing yeah something you know, drop something in, with. yeah drop something into the conversation say oh do you know i was reading oh, i was reading about body focused repetitive behaviors you know in my day we just sort of talked about nail biting and pulling and you know it's, it's actually quite common um that people do things like they pull their hair out and stuff and and then just leave it just leave it and see if if, if that works i honestly and truthfully would i have talked to someone about it would i've talked to my mum? probably not my mum, no um but i might have talked to another adult an aunt or a, a friend's mum it because it's it's once removed and I think that's a big thing. Sometimes I, I think we always, you know, as parents, we want our children to think, our children to think we're infallible. But I think as children, you don't want your parents to think badly of you. And because it, it's a shameful thing that you do in secret, there's the fear that your parents will judge you or think badly of you or make fun of you. So maybe talking to a third party might help. So that might be where you get a close relative to kind of also initiate not to say your mum's really worried about you pulling your hair out yeah. but just to sort of say to initiate the conversation or talk about it or, or see what happens because it if i could have knocked it on the head at you know in my childhood i would not say i would have conquered the world but you know it's quite I'd interesting because that was going to be one of my questions you know if you if you'd have if you think your mum would have tackled it differently and tried to find your triggers and break that habit do you think you'd have stopped before or have you got to do that yourself you've got to, you've got to do it yourself you've got to recognize the patterns you've got to recognize the triggers you've got to you've got to stop it yourself but i it, it's it is help in recognizing it and being able to figure out when i did it and why um we know so much more these days with so much more, but I, I ended up developing, I mean, I, I've had a lifetime battle with depression, but, but the, the most significant impact for me was social anxiety, huge problems with social anxiety. Um, so for me that that's been difficult because it's, it's affected a lot of, you know, personal relationships, but also business relationships, because I will happily stand up in front of a group of whoever and talk about, my subject and in fact if you give me the slides and an hour i'll talk about any subject um and i'm not an issue with that whatsoever but you put me in front of five people from that room to have a personal conversation and i'm just well can't do it i'm getting better because i've been addressing that but it's all part and parcel of it but i think a lot of it came from that it was you know being called a funny little thing an odd thing and i don't mean funny in the ha ha tell jokes I mean, you know, weird, funny, strange. And, and you kind of, when you have that on you at eight, nine, ten, you start to see yourself as, as awkward. And then, of course, you are awkward in social situations. And then you get really nervous about going into social situations and, and whatever your stress coping mechanism is comes out. Um, you know, and I think, I think a lot of teenagers who are, you know, we think of them as being withdrawn it might be that they are anxious because they feel awkward um and, and certainly in my case it was you know amongst my peers i wasn't so bad but any situation where i wasn't any situation that wasn't like my comfort zone oh, you know it, it still talks to me i'm i'm the person that pulls out at the last minute even if i've organized it i will pull out at the last minute there'll be an excuse why i can't do it um and i now i've do, i've found a way around that um, it's all about finding coping mechanisms and finding a way that works for you because i guess you mentioned it earlier that 
it is such an individual thing for everybody that is involved in it not there's not one thing that will work for everybody <laughs> and i guess it's about trial and error and actually finding out what does work and i think the other point you made earlier to recognize that it's not just females because i think there is a bit of a stigma that it is just girls and it is females but it is a massive i think the highest suicide rate is men um and and it's ridiculously high at the moment yeah. for the stats and things so i think definitely it's it's something to be aware of in both male and female it's it, it's it's a behavior but it's also a symptom it's a symptom of something bigger and it's a symptom of something deeper um, and like you say you know I'm not saying that my hair pulling would lead me to suicide, but it would certainly, potentially, it could lead me to significant social withdrawal. And then from that, you know, to a lot of loneliness and who That's knows. It's, but it's, it is, it's a repetitive behaviour, but it's one that doesn't start from nowhere. It, it starts because at some point you've done it and there's been just a little bit of relief or a little bit of that, even if it's a second of... Oof, because, you know, for most people to pull your hair out, take one strand and pull your hair out and be like, ow, it doesn't hurt me because I'm so used to it. And my pain threshold for that has just dropped right down. Um, and it, it's, I don't know if it's a result, but, you know, a hair dryer that's on up, my scalp's really sensitive and it's probably to do with that. And it's, you know, my hair's all right now, other than, you know, um, <laughs> roots, which I'm not going to show you. But it's, but as I say, I still, you've, I've still got this discrepancy where I, I pick and pull at one side and, and I, I'd see myself doing it now. I notice it. Um, and there are times, this is why I think my picking's got worse recently. Although it's always been there, it's been much worse because on a zoom call, I can't play with my hair, but I can't play with your thumb. Cause I can't hide the fact it. that I'm doing that. And you get very good at it. You get very good at just little picking. It's not obvious necessarily. Um, but the effects are, um, can I ask a question and feel yeah. free not, not to answer it, but I'm just trying to think of what people would be thinking. So you pick and pull. Do you think, is there, I assume there's not always an escalation process there, then it can be you're picking your pull, but then do you think some people do escalate or what, you know, into cutting or banging the heads or it's, biting? I don't I don't know that I mean I think that the theory around it is that most people don't but equally you I would say that there I don't know there's been a lot of kind of research or evidence into that um I, I think for the majority of people they stay with the the body focused stuff but um it depends on the level of anxiety because there comes a point where that's not enough relief and they need something that's more and they might go on to things i mean i like a lot of teenagers in my youth you know we we had this thing of you know you carved the boy you liked initials into your arm and um you know i've still got a slight mark on one place you can't really see it but um it was again there was a for me uh, and this might sound really weird but there was almost like a, a little sense of relief as I was cutting it because the other thing people sometimes do is they'll scratch but they'll keep scratching until the skin breaks yeah and it again it's it, it's it's hard to explain because it's you don't like the pain it's just the pain of that moment is a distraction it's a relief it's a like whew, someone thing. once described it to me as you know when you, you really need to go for a wee and you're absolutely bursting and you think I'm not actually going to make it to the toilet and then when you do, it, that relief you feel is kind of like, yeah. uh, and, and that's, that's how it was described to me because I, I asked someone, you know, what, kind of what it felt like and that's how they kind of described it. It's that relief at the moment. It's just that, that and, and even if, if, you've, if you've got a cut or something or one that you've done on, on your skin and to the point where it's, it's open, then when you move, you don't even have to pick. You get the pain and it's like, and it's just, I don't know, it's, 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 it's hard to explain, but it is, it's like that, just that split second of, oh, and, and then back to normal. But it, it's a bizarre one, as I say, it's, it isn't just, oh, a bit of hair, pull it out. You, you do start to, to dive in and find the bit and, and it's, it it's is quite specific. A, yeah, it's got to be the right one after a while. If and, you're happy, Sarah, that, I'm just going to let the other two into the conversation. Is that okay? So if yeah.
Why won't it work? There we go. Do you know, and I'll tell you, one of my biggest anxieties about doing this is that people go, well, it's just a bit of hair pulling. What's the big deal? But I'm evidence, I'm evidence that, you know, 54 years later, it's a big deal. It, it's, I wouldn't say it's ruined my life, but it certainly stopped me doing a lot of things. How would you back? That, that I, I didn't have the confidence to do because I thought, oh, you know, my hair and, yeah. But, Mom, have you got any questions for Sarah? Well, I just want to say, Sarah, you've done really well to come on and talk about it if it's the first time you've ever spoken about it. And as Tori keeps saying, it is a really important topic. And um, I think you've done really well. And I hope you are dealing with it. Um, yeah, I've learned a few bits from you. So thank you. It, yeah, it's, it's been really hard, really hard. And I'll be honest, the last sort of three hours I've been thinking, no, I'm just going to... Oh, so. I thought, no, this is apart from anything else it's important for me to finally acknowledge that th this is an issue and if I can help just one person to say to initiate that conversation with the child or to actually think that's me because all you you know yes it's a relief but the problem doesn't go away and you've got another problem on top of it I think you're amazing and I genuinely do believe it will help people. Um, we'll get it put out as a podcast as well and I do genuinely think this will be something that will stop the taboo subject. It, it is taboo. As I say, it's not just, it's, it isn't, but it's taboo in yourself because as a child you don't think, you don't realise what you're doing. As an adult it's the consequences of it you you just sort of and you, you start you, you then get like if you're in, in company and you want to do it it there have been times i've literally been you know and i've sort of and you but it's like i've got to do it and it, and it, you find an excuse maybe to go to the loo and just by that time it's probably but but it the the, the trying not to do it it's almost worse because it just feels oh, yeah it's up tension yeah Oh. Bet anything from you? Nothing, just thank you so much for sharing that story because I think I appreciate how difficult it will have been for you to to sit there and not um cope your way through this conversation and, and thank you for sharing and I think all of your your tips really in terms of how to start having those conversations for parents will be incredibly, incredibly helpful. It's and also just that recognition I suppose that it might very well be one relatively small behaviour that people are picking up in their children, but recognising that it's not just, oh, stop picking your hair or, or whatever, that it could very well be symptomatic of something else and that needs a conversation and maybe some further support. And I think that's really, really important. And it's got to come from somebody like yourself, Sarah, so thank you. But it's, it's and as I say, it might be something... Uh, smaller, shall I say, not small, but smaller and like something bigger that, that's underneath it. But it, it's like, and you guys think back to think back to when you were kind of like 12, 13 years old, and someone says, "You've got a spot on your face." How does that make you feel? It's like, <gasps> yeah. And it, all of a sudden, that spot isn't just a little tiny thing here. It's it's you know, it's a beacon flashing and sirens going isn't it and it's can you imagine if someone says you're pulling your hair out you're going bald why are you doing that it's that kind of the immediate reaction is hide away you don't ever as a child say or a teenager oh i've got a spot oh have i really oh gosh let me have it's a, the immediate feeling is one of shame isn't it it's one of yeah. embarrassment it's one of oh i must go and hide um, and it's that sort of thing is if you confront it it's the, the person feels really really awkward really uh, embarrassed it's it's horrible when people comment on it um so it is having it's encouraging it's encouraging people to open up but you you have to take your time you have to take your time and you have to be gentle and it might mean dropping 
it might mean having a leaflet around or leaving a website page open or something. There's a, there is an organisation that specialises in this, the TLC Foundation. Um, they weren't around in my day, but um, it's, it, there is support out there. Um, I'll pop that on the site as well. Yeah. But it's, you know, for me, um, I've got no time to look at them really, but it's, it's, it is that, yeah, I'm just thinking of tissue damage so you can get infections if you're picking uh, some of the bad things. Um, even if it's, if it's ongoing, repetitive strain injury, but as I say, the, the trichobezoa, which is the ball of hair in the stomach, which is not a good thing to have. And that actually um, could be a serious risk if they have to, surgically remove it i was going to say i assume it would go to surgical sort of operation it, you know, and they have had people with hairballs you know this sort of size in their stomach where they've just eaten their hair um but half of the people that pull will put their hair in their mouth either temporarily or to eat it, eat it. yeah so it's and it's you know yeah kids play with their hair but it's as a parent it's knowing they're just the sort of little bit and when it starts to become an issue, because as I say, I'm, I'm the evidence that it can, it can impact your life and not in a good way. That's and amazing. A so lot of people wear wigs as well. So just to, just to round up, if there was one thing you could say to somebody that is hair pulling or scratching, what would it be? Talk to someone. Talk to someone. Um, a trusted relative. You know, just sort of, just sort of say, you know, oh, I, you know, I've been pulling, I've been pulling my hair out, and I don't really like it. Um, I, it's a hard one because when you're doing it, you don't want to own up to it, you don't want to own it. But I think for anyone, it's just recognise the triggers, recognise when you're doing it, and then when you feel ready, talk to someone you trust, um, and ask just for advice. Don't ask for help or support; just ask for advice, um, because distraction is a big thing and it, it people can help but like you said Tori writing it down journaling when you do it when you're when it's worse when it's better what was what were you doing how were you feeling and if you think gosh well I went out with the day with the family and we had an absolutely brilliant day and I didn't feel the urge once but then when I was thinking about going back to school it came back so it's recognizing the triggers so that you can you can, you can almost prepare yourself as I say wear gloves <laughs> something like that wear a baseball cap because then you've got to actually, and, and it, it's that, it's recognising the triggers, see the pattern, and then and find someone trusted that you can talk to. That's um, brilliant. Honestly, Sarah, I do genuinely believe you are going to make a difference with this. So I want, just want to say a massive thank you. Well, if, um, even if one person's helped, then that's...